Hey everyone, so let's have a little bit more technical fun today. At least, I think it's kind of fun. I hope it's helpful to you at the very least. But we're gonna talk about today changes in prescription power, when you might need to do something with them or when you should just not worry about it. Or, I mean, if that's even really your biggest concern. Sometimes you just want new frames because, well, new frames. We'll talk about all that and a little bit more right after this, we'll get into it. So prescription changes, <laughs> the bane of my existence in some cases, but at this point, I mostly know what to look for that's not going to end well. Uh, sometimes you guys still surprise me, but I have a better idea in general for the most part these days. Now, I'll warn you real quick, I am waiting on a set of lenses to finish, so I might have to pause this when it gets to a really loud part. Yeah. We'll just deal with it, won't we? Because we're gonna have some fun. Now, changes in prescription, and that's when you go to the eye doctor, you do the little one, two, better three, four, whatever, back and forth, upside down, and everything else. And hopefully, you get a prescription that you can see with, and you can see really, really well. But what happens when that change is relatively small or extremely big? Big. Are there benefits? Can it be a problem? Well, yes. Eh. To both. Edger was crying over there with one. That was this one. Actually, it's good that this one's running because it jarred the brain. So, this is one we've got that was a uh, plus power. He had a little bit more plus power in his new prescription. They changed the cylinder correction a little bit and it just didn't like it. it really did not work out well for him. So we made some changes and now we're making the lenses in the prescription that he actually can see out of comfortably, which is the old one. That's always a fun one. As I said, sometimes you guys still surprise me. Generally, I know what little things we can look for. Usually a little bit more plus power is a bit of a red flag, but he'd been struggling with some distance issues. So we went for it anyway. Didn't work out. It happens. So that's kind of the thing with it. These refractions are all objective refractions, which means they're taking a number either from your current glasses or from an auto refraction, which is basically a machine or they manually do this, where they just kind of throw lenses in front of the eye, wait for that little reflex, this catch light you see in my eye, uh, by shining a bright light from the front to get it tuned into where it looks nice and crisp from our end. Dial out the working power, and then you've got a new prescription to start with. To start with is the key, because now we've done the subjective, now we need that objective portion. That's when you're gonna sit there in the machine they call the four opter with all these lenses in it, and it's gonna go back and forth and you get the better one, better two, is this better, is this sharper, is this clearer, is this smaller? And I'll tell you, the big key here is not to strain or to work really hard at trying to see exactly which is infinitesimally more perfect than the other. That will mess you up more than anything. So just sit there and enjoy. Listen to their instructions. Have some fun with it. Not too much fun, of course. But just pay attention. It's very subtle details, you know? And when it gets to a place where they don't look that different, say that. It's not a big deal. And in fact, that's what they're looking for is the point where there's not a big difference between the two. Cool, now we need to know. And now we know. Because once you know you've got to that point, it's between these two. There's almost no difference between the two. Take the lower powered one. It's magic. It's not that magical. But we make it infinitely more complicated. Big problem we see is when there's a lot of cylinder power and it suddenly shifts. <laughs> I never see these end well. Almost 15 years, I have never seen that end well. Uh, yeah, well, that's not true. I had a 10 degree shift on this eye. I've got a half diopter cylinder. It's not that crazy. Anyway, I routinely wore between that 10 degrees. Uh, there's a whole other story behind that. And the first edger we got was giving us some problems. So yeah, I, I had a few that were 10 degrees off. Generally, I wouldn't recommend that, but I knew I actually needed that. And today, that's where we're at, is that 10 degree shift. Anyway. 
you don't care about that, but it's a thing. And I have been asked recently, and this is kind of what sparked this video. He's going to watch this and go, ha, that was me. Eh, well, I hope anyway. And that is when you have this really small change in your prescription, is it worth doing, really? Or is it really even worth considering that difference? Well, it depends on your use of the glasses, first of all, as well as how perceptive you are of the differences between the multiple prescriptions. So in this case, it was a quarter doctor increase in minus. Also in my case here was a quarter doctor increase in minus as well as that 10 degree axial shift. So for me, it's well worth it because I have like 60 pairs of glasses. I'd already noticed I was having more trouble at night. And low light, by the way, is the first place you'll notice that problem. And I alluded to this in the reply is because in general, where the pupils are really big, your depth of field is shallow, you're going to have First of all, a little bit different prescription, but you're also going to notice when that depth of field is blown out and you're not seeing sharply, it's gonna be exacerbated. It's gonna be significantly worse than what it would be if you were not in a, a prescription that needed a change. <sighs> Fun never ends. But that brings about another point and that is fluctuations in vision. So not only can it be this small prescription change over the years, and here's a really fun one for you guys too. This is just one of those just nifty little observational <sighs> facts. Mm. 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 Hearsay facts, <laughs> hearsay facts. So what it is, is that the vision can fluctuate, but in the most part, we see little blocks where it's like, okay, we're gonna have a very solid prescription for these years, a very solid prescription for these years, and it's gonna kind of flux through here, and it's gonna kind of flux through here. And that is generally from about 26, 28 ish. Everybody's eyes settle out a little bit differently. And then it's solid for you get a nice little decade there where there is very minimal change. I'm on the tail end of that, and I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, the struggle. So you can get a little bit more bump and minus here and there, no major changes. Generally, you're not gonna see a strong axis shift or a lot more plus push up all of a sudden. So again, it depends a little bit on what your prescription is to start with, but that's where we see a nice, really stable, long lasting. And then you hit 40 and then you start needing an ad power or you know, we demand a lot more from our eyes today. Sometimes we're seeing that progressive need as early as the late twenties. So in that case, you could get in and needing prescription changes a little bit more regularly through that decade I just mentioned. So there's always outliers. Ah, fun never ends. Never, I promise guys. Huh. Back to that quarter change. So the myopes, generally, you're gonna love it. Unless you are on the tail end of that spectrum where you're getting close to needing progressive, you dial that extra quarter in, and now all of a sudden you get the new glasses and what happened? Well, now it's a little bit harder to read out here. Can't see your face anymore. Thankfully, that's not what happened here. My extra quarter is great, but <laughs> it can happen. I've seen it, especially when you're getting close to needing a progressive anyway, you should be on that kind of one, one and a quarter ad area. Now you throw a quarter more minus, now you're struggling towards the end of the day. It happens. On the hyperope side of it, the plus prescriptions, <sighs> I hate you guys. But don't worry, it's mutual. You hate me too. We give you more plus power because you need it right here. <sighs> That's the only place you need it. <laughs> That's the only place you want it. But unfortunately, we have to give it to you all the time. Hmm. Yeah. So we dial this extra plus a quarter in there, and I've mentioned this in the video about problems with prescriptions. This is trying to cut the head off of the snake early now and warn you when you see this, it's gonna take a while. Magic. As I mentioned, the eyes can dial in plus power on their own, and what happens is you've been wearing the prescription, your eyes have been dialing in that extra quarter, and what you were noticing is the strain at the end of the day that the myope was complaining about in their new glasses, you were complaining about that before the new glasses because the eyes were already using that extra quarter just to function regularly and see sharply off at a distance. Now we give you that extra quarter. Man, everything's great right here. This vision is excellent. And you walk outside and you turn right back around, you come in and you say, what the hell did you do? I can't see anything out there. 
This is clearly spoken from experience. I have heard those exact words multiple times. Ah, until I was less green. Ah. <laughs> no pun intended this time. Until I was less green and learned that that was going to be a problem. I always started warning these people before we even ordered the glasses. Like, hey, you're going to hate me for a week after you get these. Put them on, wear them. There's some cases that's actually necessary. I'm a big fan of not being like, hey, put them on for a week and wear them, but sometimes you have to. <sighs> so you turn around, you come back inside, you say all that, and I say, well, <laughs> here's why that is. Now, at the time, obviously, I didn't know this. So I didn't know how to cut the head off the snake. Now I do, and what that amounts to is your eye is dialing in all that extra plus power with the glasses on, you take the glasses off, you put the new glasses on, the new glasses have that plus a quarter dialed in, guess what? Your brain still says, I need that extra plus a quarter now, I have glasses on. God, I hate your brain. <sighs> so now, you've got your extra plus a quarter, everything's beautiful here, everything out there is foggy because you've got an extra quarter doctor of plus power that you don't need, so now you're effectively minus a quarter when you're walking around at a distance. And the brain just has to learn to relax and deal with that. And then it will slowly back that quarter off. Usually takes about a week. <laughs> it's not rocket science, it's just science. <laughs> neuroscience, you guys didn't know I was into neuroscience on top of all of this, did you? So many facets, and that's why I love this field because everything is so different. I don't even remember what I was talking about anymore. We got off on a whole other topic about hyper ropes. I've Sorry for you guys, but prescription changes is what we have been talking about. So, back to the prescription changes. Ah, goodness. So, when it's quarter, do you get it? Do you not get it? Do you update your 53 pairs? Yes, yes, you update your 53 pairs, and you cry the entire time. And you call the lab, and they go, you really want that many of that lens? And you go, yeah. I really, really do. Now the not fun part is, when all those come in, I have to cut them too. Guys, it's gonna be December before I have all my glasses done. That's just, <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. I don't have time to work on my own glasses. I'm working on all of yours. Uh, yeah, so your world looks like this. Actually, do I have a small plus? Because there's kind of what happens, and it takes it a second, and it clears up, and everything's okay. Just like that. Minus power. There we go. Takes it a second. All back good. I think I have, that's like plus three in sun. Yeah, that one really takes a second, and there it is. That's more similar to what the real effect is, because that darkness helps it really show off that effect. This one's nice because we're minus two there. I messed with, <gasps> you can see my light when I do that, which is a fun part. There's prism power there too. The thickness of the lens can tell you that because it's a minus lens as you move it away, it shifts things. Okay. <laughs> I'm starting to ramble now and I think we've covered all of kind of the core pieces of what I wanted to cover on this topic. If you have any further questions, throw those down below in the comments. I'll try to answer those in the comments. If it deems another video, we can break this apart and have some fun with it. We can make those into other videos. Oh, maybe we can do shorts videos. I wonder if we can do shorts replies to comments. I need to look into that. We'll try and figure that out. Anyways, that's it for now. For now, I've got so much more to do. But that's it on this topic for now. Let me know if this helped you. If it didn't, or if the ramblings of a mad optician just drove you freaking mad, and that's all there was to it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, let me know down below. We'll have some fun with that too. Catch you guys next time.